Welcome to the Blueprint Solutions video tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will show you the setup menu. Click on the setup menu on the left toolbar. This is where you will be setting your preferences for Blueprint. When you click on setup, you might have access to all or some of these categories on the left of the screen. Everything in setup is on user privilege. So if you are a user that has privileges to these things, you will be able to see them. We will start with the pricing and insurer coverage section. Click on the magnifying glass icon to expand the menu. Your clinic is responsible for these three things, batteries, accessories, and services. You manage creating the items in here and adding your clinic pricing. When you click on a catalog, such as accessories, you have the option to click Create New and enter the item information. You're going to see that there is a place for CPT and HCPCS codes. You can go ahead and load your codes here, and those will generate on your claim forms. You also have the ability to choose your expense and income accounts. If you are linked with QuickBooks, it will send these items to the item list within QuickBooks and be associated with those accounts. You can also add your clinic purchase cost and patient selling price. If you click the Has Serial Number box for accessories, when you sell this item to a patient, it will prompt you to add the serial number and warranty date. This information will be tracked under the ALD tab under the Patient's Hearing Aid tab. You can choose to put tax on each specific item. Your tax percentage will automatically calculate for you. All of this information gets calculated into your Sales by Income Account report, so you can run reports based on how many items are sold. You only have to add these items in the catalog once and then you can sell them to your patients. As for the hearing aids catalog, our Blueprint technical team maintains this catalog for you, and we do our best to stay up to date and add new hearing aids into the catalog. Oftentimes, the clinics are the first to hear about the hearing aids and receive a catalog. In the event that you don't see the hearing aid you need, just send us a support ticket and our team will add it for you. As for pricing, you get to manage all of your own prices. Whenever you want to update your prices, just click on Edit Details and enter a new one. Make sure to click out of the cell to save the changes or press Enter on your keyboard. Manufacturer prices can be adjusted if you enter bills when you receive the aids in. Patient prices are adjusted when you order, receive, and deliver the hearing aids to your patients. If you're operating in the Canadian system, all of your insurance pricing and benefit codes are loaded for you. Anytime you add a public insurer to a patient file, that will be the price that the patient sees on their file for the hearing aid. Under repairs, you have control over this catalog and over the pricing. In the event you want to create a new repair, click on the Create New button at the bottom of the screen. Choose the manufacturer the repair type, and choose your purchase cost and selling price. Then click Create. If you would like additional repair types in your drop-down menu, you can add them under the Repair Types menu. Click Create New and add the type in. Once you add the new type, you'll want to go back and add that into your repair catalog and set up your pricing. Let's move on to Referral Sources. Under the Referral Sources, click on the magnifying glass on the left to expand the options. What you see here is the primary referrer types. Anytime you click on a primary referral type, you will see the sources on the right. If you want any additional primary types in your list, you can click on the Referral Types menu and click Create New at the bottom of the screen. Once it's in your list, you're going to want to add a secondary source. To add a secondary source, you can click on the primary and click Create New at the bottom of the screen. 
add a name, and select Create. Now you will see this in your list. Each primary type has to have at least one secondary in order to add it to a patient's file. You can also right click on these to edit them or deactivate them. Next is our section for insurance companies. If you are in the Canadian system, all of your public insurers are already in the system. If you are in the US, you're in charge of putting your own insurers in the list. Click Create New and enter the insurer information. You will have to choose the insurance plan name and decide if you want an invoice for the insurer to display. The payer ID number gets utilized if you're going to be integrated with Office Ally. You can find the payer ID off of Office Ally's website and enter it here. Once the insurer is in your list, you can add them to any patient's file. Also, with the insurers, there is a fax number field. If you have this information, I recommend adding it because you have the option to fax right out of Blueprint. Our next category is Discount Reasons. Users can now add their own discount reasons. Click Create New at the bottom of the screen and type in the name of the new discount reason. Below that we have Recall Types. Users can now add their own recall types. Click Create New at the bottom of the screen and type in the name of the new recall type. Optionally, you can make this recall type the default recall. The required checkbox is to mark this recall type as required. If you check this box, it will turn red and appear in the Requires Action badge, which is the red oval with the number next to the recall section, if it's due within seven days or overdue, and the patient does not have an appointment scheduled within the next 30 days. Next, let's look at journal entry types. Users can now add their own journal entry types. Click Create New at the bottom of the screen and type in the name of the new journal entry type you wish to use. Below this is Event Types. This is the section for event types where you can create new appointments for your schedule. Click Create New at the bottom of the screen, give the event type a name, acronym, and a default duration in minutes. You can now assign that appointment a color as well. The default marked busy indicates that this appointment should show in a solid color as a visual reminder that we should not double book during that time slot. You will want to make sure to mark if this appointment is a sales opportunity because this information gets calculated into your closing rate report. Only one appointment in your list can be the default appointment type. This means that when you go to your schedule, to create an appointment, it will be the first one on the list. Our next section is Documents. This section is to add categories and statuses for your Patients Documents tab. When you scan or upload a document, it will prompt you for a title, category, and status. And click on Categories and click the Create New button at the bottom of the screen. You can do the same for Status. Under the Status list, you can highlight a status, click Edit Details, and change or choose a color of the status. Let's move on to Templates. There is a template section in the Setup menu as well. Within Blueprint OMS, you can create your own custom letters within Microsoft Word and Adobe Acrobat Pro. On our website, blueprintsolutions.us, we have merge fields that you can add onto your Word or PDF document to indicate where you want the patient name, date, warranty expiration date, and other options to auto-populate. You can create all of your own custom purchase agreements, physician referral letters, audiology reports, loaner agreements, and many more. You will want to store them under this template forms correspondence section. The invoice templates are where your custom invoices can go. To upload any of these custom forms, you click on the upload button at the bottom of the screen, or you can save it to your desktop and drag and drop it into Blueprint. For example, I have this privacy agreement. I'm going to double click on it, 
it has my clinic information, and here are what the merge fields look like. I want the patient's first name and last name to generate. This is all in a step-by-step -step guide on our website under Support Template Resources. If I pull up a patient in the patient browser, go to Patient Forms, I can generate that form. We can archive it and save a copy to the Documents tab, or you can email and fax the document. Our next section is Text Snippets. If you click on the magnifying glass icon, it will expand the menu. If you highlight the Text Snippet category, you will see the list of categories on your right. Click the Create New button at the bottom of the screen. Create Text Snippet Category. Give the category a name and click Create. If you highlight an existing category, you will see the text snippet string on the right-hand side. This works the same as the Referral Source section. You will want each primary category to have at least one text snippet string. To add a new text string, you can click the Create New button at the bottom of the screen. In the text snippet string box, you can type a paragraph or sentence that you want to use. The auto text field will help you add the snippets to reports and journals faster. The lock box will make the snippet personal or public depending on if you lock it or not. You can always edit the snippets or delete them. The last section under here is user administration. Only the owner is granted this section right away. The owner can then set up roles and assign the roles, privileges, and reports. If I select a role, Edit Privileges, the blue check marks are the privileges that this role will get. If you hover over the privileges, it will show you what this permission allows. Once done, you can assign that role to users and they will automatically get the privileges associated with that role. The same goes for reports. If you click on Edit Reports, a blue check mark will give this role access to this report. Below Roles is Users. Anytime I create a new user, it will ask for a username, password, first name, last name, and email address. You can then assign them a role, and they will get those privileges from earlier. You can also assign people multiple roles. If you want to give this particular person more privileges than others, you can right click, go to Edit Privileges, and then you can go through the list and give them the privileges you want them to have. You can right click on a user and edit their details, edit their privileges, edit reports, and edit what locations they have access to. You can also add the provider tax number for claims. All of your users are managed within your user administration. We hope you found this Blueprint OMS tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please give us a call.